Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, we are going to be going over a really popular ensemble method, which is known as stacking. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my other ensemble method, which is bagging. Uh, bagging is actually very similar to stacking, but stacking actually builds off of bagging. So highly recommend that you check that out. You should note that doing the ensemble method of stacking does not actually guarantee you to have a stronger, more robust model with better predictions. Overall, an ensemble method is essentially combining many different types of individual learning algorithms together in order to generate a singular, larger, more robust type model in order to hopefully have a better predictive performance based on all of your learners. Unlike bagging, which we assume that all the models combined are equal, stacking is a type of ensemble method in which we apply weights to the models for evaluated consideration in predictions. This helps us determine which models we can actually trust. The well-performing models have larger weights and the poor-performing models have smaller weights, contributing to the overall combined model. The overall architecture is actually quite similar to a neural network, so Make sure you check out that video if you are not very familiar with the theory and application to that. The link is in the description. But overall, there are two broad areas that you want to focus on when using the stacking ensemble method. First, you actually need to understand the difference between the base models and the meta learning models. The base models are usually a diverse range of individual models that make unique assumptions about the prediction. The meta model is a model that interprets the predictions based on the base models. Highly interpretable models such as linear regression or logistic regression can be used for regression or classification type models for more interpretability. But you can definitely not use those models and use other models as you see fits for the meta learning models. Once you understand stacking, uh, you can then move on to the next step, which is to clean up your data. You can do this easily via k-folds cross-validation in order to separate your data into a training, testing, and a validation set, which will be used throughout the entire stacking model. But the second step is to pick which models you want to be contributing to your overall model. You'll be using the training set to obtain the weights of your unique model selections. Then, based on your base models, you will obtain predictions using your validation set. Lastly, you will then compile your results into one large data frame. Also, make sure to include the validation dependent variables. This finally leads us to our final step. Once we concatenate and format our predicted data, we will then use these results as input to train the ensemble model. Using the test data, we can evaluate how well our ensemble model has done compared to the individual models. This is essentially what stacking is. Now let's do a quick demo demonstrating how cool this ensemble method can be. Okay, cool. So let's go right to the demo. I already have some packages already loaded up, but we will essentially be using this package, uh, the applied predictive modeling, in order to load in the abalone data set. We are going to be doing a really neat regression type of a uh, stack model uh, so that we can predict the age, um, which is going to be related to the rings of the abalone. So let's load in all of our libraries that we'll be using. So this is where I'm going to be getting my data set. It's just abalone. Uh, tidyverse is a really ni nice R package related to you know like your various cleanings uh, and you know pre prepping up your data. R part is for singular decision trees. Carrot has a bunch of related uh, machine learning packages that one could use. The E1071. I'll be using the support vector machine model, and I'll just be using metrics uh, to just evaluate all the models that I have over here. So let's go ahead and load in our data, data abalone over here, load that in. So we have our abalone data set where we have uh, nine features. We are going to be uh, regressing on our rings, which is going to be our dependent variable. So pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, we can do some uh, summary statistics. Uh, we, uh, so it's a very clean data set. We don't need to worry about any of the NAs. And we can go ahead and plot the histogram of our dependent variable, which we are going to be predicting. So let's go ahead and create the fold. This is going to be creating all the indices, which just split up the corresponding data sets. Uh, it's actually like create folds, that's false. So we have all of our K folds 
of our data. This is just returning all the indices. Everything's going to be unique. Um, so we have unique indices for each of these folds, and they will all add up to the number of rows that we are given for the abalone. And then we'll be using these folds in order to essentially pick which observations we will want within our overall uh, data set. So let's just do let's just test data. Let's associate the very first fold uh, indice for our test data and abalone over here. Um, I missed one. There we go. Let's create the training uh, validation data. Training validation. So this is going to be something similar, but we're actually just going to associate the folds two through ten, since the very first one is going to be related. Oops. Uh, this should be yeah. The very first uh, fold will be testing, and then the next nine folds will be associated with the training of the data set. Okay, so let's um, let's set up our other models that we'll be using. We have a tree model and we have the support vector machine. So let us actually yeah, initialize the corresponding uh, variables that will be associated with each of these models. So that would just be doing like a lambda array and then tree control. Cool, let's run this. And so these are just parameters that are associated with the algorithms that we'll be using. We are going to be training our base models here, and then we're just going to be iterating through the number of folds. So this is going to be iterating one through nine. We create a function here. So this could be iterating through all of our data that we are going to have. We are going to create a data set. Just call this like valid data. Conversely, let us create the train data, and this is going to be the abalone of, uh, we're going to be unlisting our list, of the training validation, and we are not going to call that ith index, we're going to be taking that out, and then based on the unlist, we are not going to be retaining the names, and then we're going to be keeping all the columns. So notice that we have 300, uh, we have 3,341 observations for our train data. We have 417 observations for our testing data, and we have 419 observations for our validation data. So if we add all this up, 419 plus 3341 plus 417. We have 4177 observations over here. So all of our observations that we're using, they are all unique. And we are going to be using the valid and the train data to tune out our base models. So the very first model we're going to be using, just do a typical linear model. I'm just call this linear model. We're going to be calling the linear model function. It could be rings, tilde, dots, and then the data is coming from train data. Similar to the SVM, let's call the SVM model. You can easily incorporate your other models in order to stack them all up. You can just stack all these models up and hopefully your predictions will become better as a result. Okay, so we have our three models. Let's actually run this to make sure everything is up to standards, everything is running correctly. I don't see any errors, so that is a good sign. So once we actually create and train our base models, Let's go ahead and evaluate our base models. Let's do linear predictions. We call in the linear predict function. Um, and this is all you really do is you just pass in your model and then you pass in the valid data. And then very similar to the SVMs and the tree models, we'll be having our other corresponding predictions. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our predictions. Uh, note that it should be returning Yes, it should be returning essentially an array or a list of all of our predictions. And these are going to be actual values that are outputted by our given models, as you can see on the right hand side. Now we want to actually concatenate everything. So, okay, so we have our predictions that we have over here. This is going to be acting as input for our overall stack model, which is going to be our meta model. So let us go ahead and just call this like stack model. And I'm just be using the linear model as our combined model. Uh, there are definitely other models to use, but this is just to hammer home the theory previously. And hopefully our predictions are going to be a-okay. So let's run that. Rings not found data validation. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this is rings is equal to this. And let's run that. And then our stack model is good to go. 
So once we actually create our stack model, we're gonna be doing the same process as we have done uh, in order to tune our stack model. And this is where the individual models will come into play again, where we will be predicting, here we go. We are gonna be predicting, let's add a test here. We are gonna be predicting the output for our stack model, but we'll be using the inputs of our test data, test data as the inputs for the stack model over here. So it's gonna look something like this. So very similar to our input meta model, we're gonna have a stacked model input over here where we just essentially concatenate all of our predictions together and incorporate the dependent variable associated with these predictions based on this input over here. We are gonna be using this input in order to predict our stacked predictions. Okay, and then very, very similar. All we're doing is passing in our stack model, stack model, and we'll be passing in our stack model inputs. And that is essentially our predictions right here. And then I'll go ahead and start um, printing a bunch of variables real quick. It'll look something like this. I went ahead and I just coded out what we should be printing. I'm just gonna be printing out uh, a distinguisher to just to determine where our output is coming from how far are we along in terms of our iterations um, we'll be predicting the stack model linear model results and then we'll be comparing this with the base model results just to get a sense as to how well we have done in terms of a stack model approach versus just an individual model approach so let's go ahead and run everything hopefully everything runs correctly uh, we should have yep and it looks like that our individual models, our individual base models are actually performing a lot better. I am using the root mean squared error in order to justify um, or in order to get a sense as to how well our models have uh, done throughout our iterations. And it looks like our individual models are successful. So there are a few takeaways that you should be taking from this is that the base models, you should have a lot more base models, just more than three. Make sure they're like a diverse set of base models. And also if you're doing a classification or regression problem, you should definitely stick to just either classification ensemble models, or you can just stick with the regression type algorithms and then stack them based on that. Another caveat to all of this is that my meta model, the linear model, is probably not the best. In fact, it is not the best model to use as a meta model. Uh, you could probably be using like random forest instead um, because ensemble methods generally work better with tree-based algorithms as a meta model. You can also use a GLM or generalized linear model uh, for classification type problems. Another weakness for all of our ensemble type methods, especially for stacking, is that the prone to overfit is really noticeable once you start working with a ton of data. So that is the end of this demo. I hope that you enjoyed. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.